Hello, and thank you for joining me, Shani Lee, for this flow focused on leg recovery. We will be doing a little bit of leg work, but mostly focusing on stretching out the lower body muscles. So this will be great after a leg day workout, or if you hiked, or what have you. Um, so thank you again for joining me and letting me be a part of your practice, and I will see you on the mat. So we'll get started in butterfly pose, Baddha Konasana with the soles of the feet together. So they can be close into you or they can be farther apart, whatever feels good. Uh, if you're on a hard surface like I am and you wanna sit up on a little mat or you have a blanket, that's also welcome. You can also sit on a bolster to lift the hips up or a yoga block to make this pose a little more accessible if you're really sore. <sighs> and then find a comfortable seat in this position. Otherwise, just do a normal cross-legged seat. Maybe your hands grab your feet. Maybe you close your eyes. And even though if you're doing this and your legs aren't sore, um, let's just give a little appreciation for our legs and all that they do for us. Being sore means that we did some good work with them. Hmm. Now we were strengthening our muscles. Now it's time to stretch them out and relax them. Maybe sit up a little bit taller if you find yourself slouching. Connect with your breath. Nice big deep inhales and exhales. If you like to find other movement in the body, you can move your head and neck around, or maybe you kind of wiggle or flow side to side or make circles, whatever feels good here. Just listen to your body and what you want. And we'll be here just for a couple more rounds of breath. <sighs> and let's take maybe three more rounds of breath. I'm currently filming this in my apartment where I live in Barcelona, Spain, and I live in a pretty noisy neighborhood. So hopefully sound quality will be okay. One more round of breath here. And big exhale, side out if your eyes are closed, gently start to flutter them open. And let's take our right foot, extend it out in a V, pull the left foot closer in, sit up nice and tall, inhale. And now you have two options here. You can turn your entire torso towards your extended leg and reach out, or you can take the same side hand and reach and find an extension, whichever feels better for you. So if you have the extension, keep your chest nice and open. Maybe you gaze up to the sky. Otherwise, fold your chest down towards your leg. Hmm. If you need a little more accessibility, you can bend your knee so that you can reach your foot a little bit better. Again, lots of options. Yoga is about your body, not about mine. <sighs> And let's take one more round of breath here. Big sigh out. And then start to bring it back to center however you are. And now extend your other leg out in a V. Sitting up nice and tall. Again, this is a great place if you have a yoga block or a bolster, you can sit up to make this more accessible. Bend your knees. And either you reach forward or you reach for both of your feet, whatever feels best to you. Trying to keep the back open and straight, not caving the chest forward. <sighs> Noticing if you're holding tension anywhere, I just cue that because I just noticed that I was, my quad muscle was really tight in the sense of me gripping it. <sighs> Try to release here in wide angle pose. Let's take one more round of breath. And then we'll take that one leg stretch to the other side. Start to roll the spine back up and now bring the other foot in, the right foot in, the left leg extended. And again, the two options, your arms lift up as you breathe in and either turn your entire torso and fold or reach same side arm for your foot. Keeping the chest nice and open if you are. And your hand can be extended. It can be doing whatever it wants. Gentle pressure on the head. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
maybe with each exhale you sink into this a little bit more. If you notice your mind wandering, try to bring it back to the breath. Last round of breath here. Big sigh out. Let something go. Start to roll it back up. And we'll bring our feet back together into Baddha Konasana. I'm going to rotate just to have a different angle here. Maybe bring them closer together. Maybe bring it wider apart and fold. Try to find a different variation of this pose. See if you can't use it to get into the body in a different way. If you've been with me, you notice I try to not say modifications. Um, I think sometimes that has a negative connotation that you need to modify something, even though it's totally not. But I like to say variation, right? Find the variation that works for your body. Taking one more round of breath here. Exhale it out. Start to roll the spine back up. And now hands come to the outsides of your knees. Bring them together. Stretch your legs out long if you need to adjust on your mat to come into Paschimottanasana. Inhale, sit up nice and tall. Maybe remove some of the flesh from underneath your sit bones, arms reach up into the sky. And exhale, fold it over. So options here again, you can bend your knees slightly. You can have your fists underneath your knees. You can use a towel or a yoga strap. And you can also be sitting up on a bolster or a block or a pillow. Just letting you know all of the options here. Notice if your feet are externally or internally rotating, try to use this space this time to draw presence to the body and to the breath. And this you can be caving forward as I am. You can try to have a flat back, whichever feels better in this moment for you. One more round of breath here. Big sigh out and start to roll the body up. And now start to bring the knees in closer. Maybe you cross your ankles and we'll roll our way forward if that serves you. Otherwise, come into a tabletop position in a way that serves your body. Take a second here, maybe move something out. Maybe find some cows and cats. If you do, cow, drop the belly, breathe in. Cat, exhale, arch the spine. Or you can just be moving side to side. Let's take one more moment here. Maybe you release the neck, shake something out in the head, and come back to center and stillness. Inhale the breath. And as you exhale, start to walk your hands out or your knees further back so that you can drop your hips. So your hands should still be roughly underneath your shoulders, finding rising cobra, bhujangasana. Big breath in. If you were hiking or climbing or maybe walked a lot of stairs, right, our hip flexors where our hips and our legs connect often get really tight or even if we're just sitting all day, which a lot of us do, right, in today's world. Oh, a nice big stretch here. And then we're going to start to tuck your core in, taking it back to child's pose. If you want to open your legs out a little wider, you can and bring your toes in. And exhale, release the hips back towards the heels. <sighs> Take a moment here. If you live with a friend or you have access to a friend or a partner or what have you, if you do this stretch and then ask the other person to gently push your sacrum down, it feels really good. I'm a big fan of partner yoga stretching. Let's take one more round of breath here, and then we'll bring it back up to Bharamanasana tabletop pose. So start to roll the body back forward, readjust on your mat so that you bring your knees underneath your hips, hands underneath your shoulders. Take a moment here, reset, side out, and then ground down in the left knee, right leg shoots back, and exhale, tuck it in towards your nose. Twice more, inhale, lift with the glute, just a little bit of work here. Exhale, inhale, lift, and we're going to step all the way through, exhale to find a low lunge. So again, you can have a little mat under your knee, you can fold your mat up, 
and inhale, reach up into the sky, and exhale, settle here. So maybe you're a little more stacked, like a 90 degree angle, or maybe you are deeper into it, whatever feels better for you. And you can have your hands up, or if you want to give them a rest, you can bring them to the front knee, like you're doing a sports photo. <laughs> I played basketball and volleyball, and so I always remember doing the one knee forward, <laughs> hands on the knee picture. <sighs> With each exhale, try to find yourself releasing a little more. Maybe that doesn't mean you move physically, but maybe that means you find tension in your body where you're, where you're holding. You try to breathe into that tension. Maybe it is sinking a little bit deeper. <sighs> and if your hands are on your knee, inhale, bring them back up. And both hands come to the inside of your foot. Exhale, the left hand stays, maybe slightly turned out. And then open the right arm to the sky. Nice big twist, Pavrita Anjaniasana. Right, so your shoulder's not caving in, it's rotating out. <sighs> Take one more moment here, and now we're going to stretch out our back leg by bending our knee, our left knee, and reaching for our foot. If that's unavailable, you can use a towel or a yoga strap. Try to find the bind. If not, just stay in the twist. <sighs> and breathe into it. Or if you're not so concerned about the yoga flow, you can stand and find a quad stretch standing. Hmm. Let's take two more rounds of breath here. One more round of breath. And big exhale, gently release your foot. Right arm sweeps back up into the sky and exhale, frames your front foot. Shine your chest forward, inhale. And moving our hips back, start to roll onto the front heel to find Ardha Hanumanasana. Half Lord of the Monkey's Pose or half splits. Big inhale here, big exhale. See if you can't sink a little bit more. If you're really um, tight, I was gonna say sore, if you're really tight or sore in the front foot, you can bring your foot all the way to the mat and that stretches out this front part a little bit more. Otherwise, you can be on your heel. <sighs> and with each exhale, try to find a release. Emotional release, mental release, physical release. One more round of breath here. <sighs> And we'll come back to our tabletop pose. First, make your way to a lunge, inhale, extend the, left, the right leg out, exhale, and bring it down. Take one more round of breath here, and now we'll do that on the other side. Big inhale, big exhale, ground down in the right knee, and the left leg shoots behind you. Inhale, and exhale, draw it in. Twice more, inhale, reach, and exhale, tuck. Inhale, reach, and the same step it all the way through. Exhale, find your low lunge. Arms sweep up into the sky as you inhale, and maybe you're either more in a 90 degree stacked position, or you really sink your hips down. Whatever is available to you and feels better. You can maybe your hands are up if you want to get a little arm work, or on your front knee like you're taking a nice little sports photo. Your back feet, your back toes can be curled under, they can be released again. Your body, your practice. <sighs> Side out, try to sink in. If you're feeling a lot of pressure in the low back, maybe come out of it a little bit. <sighs> Let's take one more round of breath. Big sigh out. <sighs> and arms reach up into the sky. Both hands to the inside of the foot, exhale. Right hand stays on the mat, inhale, open the left arm to the sky. And then your right fingers are maybe turning slightly out, imagining that you're opening up a jar. That'll help keep your chest rotated open and not caved in. And maybe you stay here, maybe you drop your back hand and open up your chest a little bit more. If the bind is available, start to lift the back foot, reach for your foot or your ankle with your hand. Find that nice quad stretch. Oregon, you can stand up and find a quad stretch that way. Good. 
Breathe into it. My quads are really tight. One more round of breath. And then gently release. Inhale, arm sweeps back up. Frames your foot on the exhale. Shine your chest forward. And exhale, start to rock the hips back so we can come into our half splits on the other side. Again, option, rolling onto your front heel, or you can have your front foot down and stretch out more of this front part of the ankle, whatever feels better for you. Right leg recovery day. Let's take one more round of breath here. And start to walk, rock it back forward, extending the left leg, inhale, back behind you, and exhale, bring it back, tabletop pose. Shake everything out. And now we're, we'll take that flow similarly, but at a higher level. Find nice and stillness. And then as you already tuck your back toes, finding downward facing dog, start to lift the hips slightly and slowly as you extend into your Adho Mukha Svanasana. Pedal the feet out here. <sighs> Get a nice calf stretch. Grounding down in all 10 fingers. <sighs> One more round of breath here. And then start to find stillness. Exhale, ground down in the left foot. Inhale, right leg lifts up slightly. And exhale, shift forward into a plank as you tuck your knee. And inhale, extend. Doesn't need to go very high. Exhale, tuck it in where you can be in tables hot for this. One more time. Inhale. And step it all the way through. Exhale, coming into your high lunge. Inhale, roll your body up. And maybe your arms reach into the sky. They can be on your hips. Whatever feels better for you. So this is where the leg work comes in a little bit. Send energy through the back heel. Breathe into it. One more round of breath. Big sigh out, invite the shaking. If there is, arms reach up and we're going to open up into a warrior two, dropping the back heel down as we open our foot and toes out to the long edge of the mat and bring your hands into a T, gazing over your front fingers. Ground down into your front heel. Draw your core in. Maybe rotating the pelvis down. Virabhadrasana dos. Ground down in the outer edge of the back heel. You are strong. I know if you are really, really sore in the legs, this might be a lot. Big sigh out. And then start to bring your front leg straight as your arms touch overhead. And exhale, bend back, arms back into a T. Twice more. Inhale, push through the front heel. Exhale down. Inhale, keep your legs straight. Now drop your back hand towards your back leg and find a reverse triangle. <sighs> One more round of breath, and then we'll find our full triangle. Keep your legs where they're at, hands come back to the T, reach it forward and drop your front hand towards your front shin as your other arm comes up overhead, or you can drop it behind your ear, whatever feels best, or you can extend it overhead. Your front hand can also float or touch to the mat. Just make sure you're not compromising the position to reach the floor. You can also use a yoga block. Feel this nice stretch in the hip. Breathe, maybe you smile. Take one more round of breath here. Exhale, side out. Use your core, start to lift back up into warrior two, bending the front leg, and now drop the front elbow to the front knee and extend your top arm overhead. If you do want to increase this, you can float your bottom hand either in front or to the front of the mat. And then another option is maybe you take this front hand 
drop it to the mat. Maybe you stay there. Maybe you turn your top palm around and find a bind. This is the part where we are working our leg. Just three more rounds of breath, whatever position you are in. Take one more round of breath. Exhale it out, release whatever you have. And on your next exhale, turn everything back to the mat and step back to a plank. Whew, shake it up and move through a little vinyasa flow. Shift your weight forward, either lower halfway or all the way down, untuck the toes. Drop your hips as you shine, your chest forward, breathe in. Upward facing dog. Exhale, bring it back down, downward facing dog. Lift the hips and readjust the feet. So we'll do that just on the other side and then we'll take it back down to the mat, right? So just a little bit of work. Big sigh out, right foot stays, this time left leg lifts up into the sky. And three times, knee to nose, exhale. You can be in tabletop or downward facing dog to plank. Inhale and exhale. Inhale, lift with the glute. And exhale, step your foot all the way through and find your high anjaniyasana, high crescent lunge. So again, your hands can be up into the sky. They can be kind of on your hips, wherever reaches, send energy through your back heel. I know you're working a little bit of the front leg, but also try to find the stretch. That's what's so great about yoga is it is an active work and stretch at the same time in positions like this. Take one more round of breath. And then in arms, reach up into the sky and open up into warrior two, back heel back and down, toes face the long edge of the mat and find the Bhadrasana Dos. Easing over your front fingers, shoulders melt away from your ears, tuck your core in. Crown down through the front heel and the outer edge of the back foot. And now we'll do our straight leg pulses three times. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Maybe you touch your arms overhead. And exhale, bring it back down. Twice more. Inhale. And exhale. Last time, inhale, keep your front leg straight. And then drop your back hand towards your back leg. Find a reverse triangle. Try not to lock out your front knee. There should be a slight, slight bend. Back knee too, both knees. One more round of breath, and then we'll take it to a full triangle. Inhale, arms come back up to your teeth, reach it forward, and drop your front hand towards your front shin. Your top arm can be now reaching into the sky or extended overhead. Maybe your front hand reaches to the mat or a block or it floats. Applying gentle pressure to the inside of your front leg if you want. Trikonasana triangle pose. Oh, feel that nice big stretch. Let's take one more round of breath here. And then start to bring it back up. Warrior two arms, warrior two front leg, and then drop your front elbow to your front knee and extend your top arm up overhead. Either again, if it was in triangle, or for the first time, if it was more straight up in the air. Now again, options here, if you want to intensify this, you can float your bottom arm. Either way, you can drop your front hand to the inside of your front foot. Maybe you turn your front palm around and find a bind. <sighs> Whatever feels best in your body. For three more rounds of breath. <sighs> again, draw back. Draw your attention back to your body. Are you holding tension somewhere? Are you grimacing? Are you gritting your teeth? Release. One more round of breath. <sighs> Whatever you have, if you have the mind, release it. Inhale, readjust, and everyone on the exhale, turn to face the mat and adjust back into your plank pose. Find your vinyasa flow to reset. And we'll all meet in downward facing dog. 
Ah, bem saia. And then as you're ready, left foot stays and whole right leg lifts. And this time bend your knees to let you open your hip. Big, nice stretch. And then slowly bring your leg back down. We'll do that on the left side. Right foot stays in hill. The left leg opens, lifts and opens, I should say. Try to keep your shoulders straight. And set your foot back down. Inhale. And then on the exhale, step your right or left foot up, whichever you want. And then turn both toes towards the long edge of the mat and fold over wide-legged forward fold. So here you can either turn your toes in and your heels out if you want to get more of a stretch on the outer part of your foot. You can add a bind in this if you want. Or you can have one hand on the mat and one hand extended and switch between that as you see fit. Just giving options here. And then if you are doing the extension from one hand and you haven't switched, go to the other side and we'll be here for two to three more rounds of breath. Let's do one more round of breath. Whatever you have, start to slowly release it. And then walk your hands back towards the front of your mat as you turn your body there. And we're going to come into pigeon pose. So plant both of your hands down, lift your front leg enough so that you can sweep your foot off to the left side and then start to sink your hips. If you know this doesn't serve you, you can come down onto your bum, left foot on the mat, right leg crossed over. So whichever serves you. And if you are in the pigeon pose where your hips are facing the mat, you can stay up nice and tall. You can drop your elbows or your chest towards the mat. We'll be here for about three more rounds of breath. Two more rounds of breath, nice and slow. One more round of breath. And if you are super, super sore, don't try to push anything. I should have said that earlier today as you already start to come back onto your hands if you're not. And start to tuck your back toes. If you're on a seat, start to come back to your wide-legged forward fold. Plant your hand as if you're in the lunge again. And now we're going to take it to the other side. So just turn your whole body around, coming into a lunge with the other foot facing. Reset your hands and then find your position. So maybe if you're in a seat, it would just be easier to switch legs and not do that whole <laughs> complicated transition process. <sighs> Wherever you're at, find your way with the other leg now in pigeon pose. And again, maybe you sit up nice and tall. If you do want to stay up tall and you want to invite the back bend, could have said that last time too, but so that you know if you do this flow again, there's always a way that you can modify it. Maybe you sink on your elbows. <sighs> Let's take three more rounds of breath here. And then as you are ready, start to come back on your hands if you're in the pigeon pose that I'm in. Start to tuck your back toes, lift your hips so that you can step your left foot back under you. And we'll bring it all the way back to the tops of our mats so that we're back facing forward. And then we're going to step our back foot up outside of our left hand and sink our hips down into Malasana pose. So if you want to adjust on your mat, you can. <sighs> If this is too intense for you, you can be in a half squat with your knees, with your elbows kind of pushing your knees out. 
you can be sitting up on a block if you want. If you want to lift your heels and have something under them, like a rolled up blanket, you can. <sighs> Garland pose. Pressing into your palms. <sighs> Maybe you close your eyes here. Try to find a nice tall spine. <sighs> Maybe you smile. Take one more round of breath here. And then start to let your hands come to the mat. And if you can, just sit your butt right on down and adjust on your mat as you need. And we'll come into boat pose. So if you just wanna sit and lift right there, you can. Your legs can be straight or they can be bent. <sighs> Breathe through this last little bit of work. We're going to open three times, that's it. So as you're ready, extend your legs out and bring them back in. Extend out and back in. Navasana, extend out, <laughs> bring them back in. Ooh, and then set your feet down, sit up nice and tall. <sighs> Take a round of breath here. And then arms sweep up into the sky, breathe in. And exhale, bring your hands behind you. If you need to adjust whatever you're sitting on, that's fine. We're going to come into a reverse tabletop. So hands can be pointing out. Kind of however it feels good for you, ground down in your front heel. And then as you're ready, press into your front heels and lift your hips up. One round here. And now as you start to sit your hips down, either sit them down or pull your hips all the way through. <laughs> Whichever you want, we'll do that four more times. Inhale, lift the hips and either just sit it back down or pull all the way through. Inhale, lift. Exhale down. <sighs> Twice more, inhale. Really squeeze your glutes. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, sit it all the way down. And again, if you want to adjust on your mat, you can. <sighs> Big sigh out, arms reach up, inhale. Exhale, reach back forward, Paschimottanasana again. <sighs> Do a little check-in with your body. How do you feel? Hopefully you feel a little more open. One more round of breath. And then start to roll the spine up and then bring your right foot in. And we'll do Janu Shirsasana. Arms lift up and reach it forward. So either you stay here. If you want to continue to stretch out the low back a little more, you can grab your left foot with your right hand and extend your other arm out to the side. Just adds a little bit more of a stretch in the low back. Let's do one more round of breath here. And then roll it up and switch. Other leg goes long, left leg comes in, arms reach up, inhale, sit up nice and tall, and exhale, reach. Again, you can have a fist underneath your leg, you can have your knee bent. Whatever makes this more available, a towel or a yoga band. And if you wanna stretch out the low back a little bit more, opposite hand, opposite foot, other arm reaches a little further out to the side. One more round of breath here. Side up and start to roll up. And last thing here, start to bring your right foot into a almost cross-legged seat. And now take your left foot and stack the outer edge, kind of on this fleshy part by the knee to come into fire log pose. So you're trying to stack your shins over one another, sitting up nice and tall. Ooh, nice big stretch here. As you see, I have a lot of space. A lot of times maybe you can put a block between your legs if you want some support. This is a pretty intense hip stretch for some. <sighs> if you want to intensify this, you can always hinge your body forward. Try not to slump into it. But with a straight back, imagine that you're just bending from the waist. One more round of breath here. And release, and we'll take that to the other side. Other leg comes 
to be the base, and now stack your other leg on top. Fire log pose. So this is a great one to have a blanket underneath you if you're super bony, if you're on a hard surface. And just breathe one more round of breath. And slowly start to release. And come back into whatever easy seat serves you. If you want a Shavasana, you can lay down for five minutes or so after this video. <sighs> Otherwise, just come back to a seat that feels good in your body. Maybe bring your hands to your heart center, your third eye space. Maybe they're just in your lap somewhere. <sighs> Reconnect with your breath. I hope you enjoyed this flow, focusing on stretching out the lower body with a little bit of work in there. So it's again, perfect for after a leg day workout or just whenever you feel a little tight. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy my third video now in my room here in Spain, fourth in Spain in total. Be sure to check out the other two. I did a morning and evening bed yoga sequence. And thank you again for joining me on the mat. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.